Good evening and welcome to tonight's show from DJN TV, Disc Jockey News TV. Tonight's show is brought to you by Electra Voice, DJ Event Planner, DJ Trivia, Odyssey Innovative Designs and Cases, NLFX Professional, Promo Only, and the DJ and TV Insiders. DJ Event Planner will change the way you manage and run your business. Streamline all of your procedures and software into one easy-to-manage system. DJ Event Planner, the ultimate online planning tool. As he always does that to us. For those of you that ever want to know what's going on behind, um, <laughs> you're about to see it almost. <laughs> John, John just likes to mess with us. That's that's all there is really to it. There's not more story to it. It's just he likes to mess with us. But anyway, welcome everybody. Thank you very much for taking an opportunity to join us on this Monday evening. The first. Uh, not the first Monday, I guess, without Monday Night Football, but it's been like a couple weeks, and, and you're still with us. So that's completely awesome, and thank you very much for doing that. Um, we've got a great show. I know the five topics that are going to come up, and I challenge uh, Shaney every week to come up with the sixth one, and, and just because I don't I don't want to stop the five. It's too fun. <laughs> We've got to keep going. It's too fun. So, so tonight she's gonna do. She's gonna deliver. I have faith that she will deliver for us. So without further ado, Shaney. Yes. Take it away. What is our first one for tonight? All right, our first one, Woodstock. Um, for I don't want to say old timers for you old timers, <laughs> but um, I think most everybody knows the history of Woodstock and what Woodstock was and and everything. Well, Woodstock is coming back. And they're coming back because it's their 50th anniversary festival. So they're okay. planning, they're planning, it's already been planned, but it's going to be a 50th anniversary festival and it is at the Woodstock site. So they're actually doing it in Bethel, New York, like in the, in the same exact site that they did the original Woodstock, which I think is kind of cool that they're, they're going back to the, um, the original site. So they're having their golden anniversary and it's going to be August 16th through 18th. Okay. And um, Live Nation is the one who's hosting this. But here's the thing. They're saying it's a go. It's something we're going to be doing, but we're not telling you who the artists are yet. <laughs> but but we're letting, we're letting you know... know well, they're saying we're letting you know all the performances will be multiple genres and multiple decades. So they're definitely okay. spanning the decades. So I guess they're smart. I mean, they, Live Nation is a smart company. They want as many people and as many ages and as many people. So it's like they want the people probably who did like Woodstock, you know, back in 1969 that are s still doing stuff to, to come there. And then they want the new generations to come. But here's the thing that I actually saw this morning. I would say 80 to 90% of the hotels around that whole area are already like sold out. Wow. So people don't know who the musical, you know, artists are, but I think because it's such a just staple of Woodstock to say that you went to the golden anniversary of Woodstock, I'm sure they're going to have incredible, you know, artists and bands there i don't think it would be like a lineup that we would be like oh i wouldn't want to go to that so they're saying look book book your hotel now because the hotels are booking up and then of course probably the next part of the hotels are gonna be like well we could probably jump our price 300 <laughs> percent oh come on they already did that right. oh yeah <laughs> oh you know that you know they already you know they already did that so yeah so they're doing it around like the same weekend i think it was august 15th 
through 18th of 1969 was like the original dates. So these dates are August 16th through 18th. And um, they, they did do a 25th anniversary concert in 1994. It wasn't there, but they did kind of like a, a 25th anniversary and they had here. Now I'm going to like drop some names for 1994. John, we did like the 80s. Yep. Now I'm going to drop some 1994 names for you. Excellent. Cheryl Crow, Blues Traveler, Collective Soul, Delight. These were the artists that performed at the 1994 anniversary. Joe Cocker. Cypress Hill, Metallica, Nine Inch Nails, Aerosmith, and Bob Dylan. So those are the people that performed in 1994. And, you know, some of the people that performed at the original Woodstock are still around. So, you know, some people performed, it was like Joan Baez, it was Santana, Janis Joplin, well, I mean, not won't happen but yeah, yeah, grateful course. dead the who crosby stills and nash so you never know for this golden anniversary they might do uh you know these are some of the original these are the some 1994 and now here's the new generation hmm. that'd be interesting to see a, just a, a straight kind of eclectic across the like you were saying across the span but i mean even just to kind of hit on the the previous two editions yeah um, yeah i think they'll be you know i mean that's my two cents of what they should i maybe i'll call live nation be like can i talk to marketing <laughs> <laughs> uh. <laughs> so yeah that's very interesting august 16th through 18th so um anyone who's like east coast area well we'll all be on east coast we'll i was gonna there. say you could hit probably like expo mm -hmm. and then <laughs> and then head and on go to woodstock we could have like the DJ and TV Woodstock experience. Oh my goodness. You know, John, I'm just to let you know, I'm free that weekend. If you want to, you know, take the corporate card and get us all tickets. How much fun would that be? You know be? what I'm saying? For those that, that want to know, we're going to put our jazz album on hold and we're going to work on the Woodstock experience. The Woodstock experience. <laughs> that's right. Although the jazz <laughs> album, we were, you know, we had it figured out. We had the plan, the strategy. We were there. We just still had to learn to play the instruments that we needed to play. Yes, small I was just details, gonna, small details. That's small details. That's very small details because all we need, like we said, are just the people to just 3, get, get the album. It doesn't matter what we sound like. Exactly. We just need 3,000 people to. We're, we're good. We're number one. <laughs> <laughs> we're number one. If we do it over the Christmas holiday, we may find it even lower. Well, we have to do it before Christmas holiday because those albums drop in that's November. True. October 26th. Right. <laughs> October 26th is the date. So oh, yeah, sure we have some it. time. We have time to think about everything for us. We'll, we'll have it figured out. <laughs> we got some time. A little time. Yes. Time. So that is Woodstock, ladies and gentlemen. If you're interested, definitely, I mean, look it up, see what's going on with it. Um, like I said, they haven't dropped the artist yet, but they definitely dropped the date, the venue, um, the hotels, stuff like that. I don't know if they're going to have like an RV, which they probably will like an RV area for people to camp out or something, which I'm sure they will, but it'll be interesting to see what, what happens with this um, golden anniversary of Woodstock in August. There we go. Yeah. All righty. Uh, let's move on to number two tonight. Number two is for John. Yes. We are talking about Make a Motley Make. Crue. Oh. He doesn't have a Motley Crue album behind him. No, I don't, but I thought we were going to talk about Megaseg, but... <sighs> No, she said for me. Well, I mean, it starts with an M. It, I, there we go. So we're halfway there. There we go. Okay, fine. So Motley Crue, um, when was the last time you heard the name Motley Crue? If we haven't talked about it on this show, I haven't <laughs> heard it. <laughs> yeah, not so much. If we're referring yeah. to the band, it's it's been a while. If we're referring to an actual group of people, uh, maybe not that long. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's why my boys had a brainstorm of what they were going to do. Uh, yeah. Well, we're talking about the band, and we might be hearing more of them now. Because guess what? They are reuniting and it feels so good. They are getting back together, ladies and gentlemen. The band is back. 
So they're making new music on top of it. It's not just they're coming back and they're doing their staples, which I'm sure they're going to do. Sure. But they said they want to make new music. So Vince Neil, Tommy Lee, Mick Mars, Nikki Sticks are coming back together and they're making new music and they've already recorded. Um, they said they're going to record it. They're in the process of doing like four tracks right now. And they said, we'll see if we're going to do a tour. But right now we want to do some new music. Um, their last tour was January of 2015. That wasn't too long ago. kind of let you guys know. No, it wasn't. It really wasn't that, that long ago for, you know, a group like that. But it was called their farewell tour, right? Yes, of course it was. <laughs> but then again, if it's like Cher's farewell tour... <laughs> Farewell to this year. Yeah, to this year. Farewell tour of this year. <laughs> so right now they're just in the process of making the music, making the album. I have a feeling that they're probably going to go on tour if they're doing an album because that's the thing to do, right? I mean, that's, of course. We're going to sell what, bars everywhere. Yeah, that's what's in. That's what's in. Yeah. So Motley Crue, look out for their new music um, sometime probably mid end of this year. Okay. There we go. They're back. I, I really don't know what to think about that. I, it's yeah. um, so many of the groups that heavy metal, I'd go more hard rock, but still, even at that, not really seeing a lot of sudden upswing. Mm -hmm. But be prepared. You never know. Could yeah. Surprise. Could surprise. Yeah. Okay. Three. Three. So we're going to kind of do name association right now. Oh, boy. This is my favorite so game I'm gonna, ever. I'm going to say a name, and then you tell me what you think of when I say the name. The name is Axl Rose. Huey Lewis. What do you think of? <laughs> Did I win? Really? <laughs> no. Did I place? No. I, was I on the board? No. Okay. Just because that's what's on your brain all the time. We'll, we'll try this. That's game. why you can't play word association with we'll John. We'll try to play this I game again. I figured if I just threw a random name out like Axel Rose. Doesn't John, you want to try it again? Game. Axel Rose, go. It's going to be the same. I bet I you. Say, Axel make, Rose. Megaseg. Because I can play his songs with Megaseg. That's the last time I played his music. Oh, uh, we, we were putting John in a 30 second timeout. I don't know how we could do it video style. <laughs> He didn't give me controls yet. I can't do it. <laughs> he's going. He's going. I have control. Okay, I love the answers in the chat room right now. <laughs> and we I'm loving some of the answers in the chat room. Dan, if I say Axel Rose to you, what's the first thing that comes to your mind? In in my serious answer, my funny answer, yes. my funny answer was gonna say Let's, Valentine's Day. At least Rose. Okay, Valentine's Day. No, no. Okay. Yeah. In, your, in your serious answer. Guns and Roses. Okay. Okay. Well, would you associate Axl Rose with the cartoon Looney Tunes? <laughs> because I'm about to explain why. <laughs> you got some supplain and doo doo. I do, you Vasky Rabbit. Yes, I definitely do. So, Axl Rose is back, ladies and gentlemen, by himself. It's just Axl Rose. It's not Guns N' Roses. It's Axl Rose. And he's doing a collaboration with Looney Tunes. That is correct. Okay. So his, his, okay. his last song that came out, just to give you like a heads up about what's going on with Axl Rose, was 2008. Okay. That was like the last time he, he was in the, well, I don't want to say the last time he was in the news because I'm sure TMZ probably had him in the news for some stuff we don't, that was probably in the chat. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. so he is, um, he has a new song out called Rock the Rock. It's actually out right now and the video is out right now. And it's part of the Looney Tunes reboot. So for all you OGs out there, if you guys know who the Looney Tunes are, Bugs Bunny, um, Elmer Fudd. Right. Mm -hmm. It was like yeah. a cartoon. I want to say it was probably part of the Saturday morning lineup. Maybe it was. Right. Saturday morning yeah. lineup while you're, you know, eating your, your Lucky Charms or whatever you're eating, your Golden Grams. I don't know what you guys were eating back then. You would sit in front of the, you know, on the floor in front of the TV and watch your Saturday morning lineup. So Looney Tunes is coming back. 
and they decided to come back with Axl Rose to to start it off. Uh, yeah. Okay. I, so is he, <laughs> I don't know. So the reboot. Voicing a character. I I don't know. So here's the thing. You ready for this? Um, he did. So the song, the song he has Bugs Bunny and Company as his. Back Back up band. Band. Yeah, he's got Bugs Bunny, or there's a there's a rabbit, there's a pig, and there's a coyote, and and a, right that wild coyote. That's right. That's yeah, they, that's, you know, they just don't look very accurate. <laughs> it's like I can tell all you guys are on the computer right now. So the song is featured in a Looney Tunes episode called Armageddon Out of Here, and the and the whole like cartoon has Axl Rose in it. And they team up with Rose to rock out loud enough to destroy the incoming asteroids. <laughs> okay. Uh, on Wiley uh, if you can't song. get eclectic <laughs> stuff from me on I Got Five on it to talk about as as Dan says around the water cooler. <laughs> There's Wiley Coyote firing scud missiles at this thing. Right. I mean, come on, people. So like I said, it's called Rock the Rock. And it's part of the Looney Tunes reboot that's streaming. And there's a video. So you could definitely even see the video that John's talking yeah, about yeah, right there's, now. There's the, there's and a- like I said, it's Bugs Bunny and his whole company that's their backup band. And the whole theme of the cartoon of the video is the Rose and, and the team are rocking. There's, they need to rock out loud enough so to destroy can- the incoming asteroids. Wow. It's like... It's like, what was that Bruce Willis? I'm not one? telling you who wins, so I'm not ruining it, that, Day. Bru- I'm not going to ruin the plot for you to tell Bruce- you like what happens at the end. Armageddon. Armageddon, John. thank you. Armageddon, it's like a cartoon version of Armageddon. That's why it's the, the episode is called Armageddon Out of Here. Uh, that's a cartoon Get version. it? Armageddon Out of Here? I get it. Don't, get it don't ruin the plot. People want to make sure that... <laughs> Sorry, sorry. That's why I said. That's why I said today. I go. I didn't tell you how it ended. I don't know how is it how it ends, but let's face it. I'm not telling you how it ended, but Ax- just Ax- for like a little fun. Um, and here's my thing: if you like, if you do music videos at events or at bars or at anywhere, I do a lot of ambient music videos where I actually do cartoon type stuff, where it's just the, the it's playing in the back, but I'm playing my real music. This would be an awesome because it's Axl Rose and the band and stuff. This would be an awesome video to just think about playing like in the back if you're doing those type of music videos where you're just playing your normal music. I do this a lot during dinner. Mm. Um, like I'll play some dinner stuff and then instead of like doing the logo or whatever we're doing on the screens, I'll do some stuff like I'll play I'll play videos from like Pulp Fiction, the dance scenes, things like that. And this would be an awesome one to just incorporate that's current. <laughs> so Axel Rose, ladies and gentlemen, you heard it here first. I'm not sure which one of those are stooping the lowest. Looney Tunes to bring in and try to think that the rock uh, rocking um, asteroid is a good idea or Axel for going and being in a cartoon. I, I don't know which one. Well, you know, it, it can't be the same people that used to have control over Looney Tunes. I mean, it's been years since we've had anything of quality and, and um, I shouldn't say anything, quality, anything. <laughs> anything, yeah, it's been, it's been a while. And, and then, so, so, you know, they finally got it back, so somebody's in, in the, the wrong hands, obviously. <laughs> um, wow. It's in hands. We'll put it that way. It's in hands. <laughs> it's in hands. Okay, what's our next one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I... I, I'm glad I, we didn't end on that. I no, think I'd have I, I, Well, like, I'm afraid by not looking at the next one, we're probably maybe <laughs> sliding down farther in the evolutionary, evolutionary scale. So John, we, that's why you don't leave the list up because then you're see, But you see how like, then I like come back yes, up at the end. I think you see what I, I did. Okay. I did. I see what you did there. And I think you're going to save it, but this is like bringing no, in. I'm going, I'm, yeah, I'm going like to Donnie now. A, I'm, doing, know, I'm definitely doing. <laughs> yeah, we're bringing in the left-handed submariner right now into the sixth inning, and we know he's going to get shelled. So go ahead. Look, just in case there's one or two fans out there, I'm just letting them know the 411 on Mr. Donnie Osman. Wow. that it, The whole world's fans right here must be two. Let's go. <laughs> no. I'm just. <laughs> no, not me. Look, he did Joseph and the Amazing Technicolor Dreamcoat. And he's got his face on the side of a casino in Las Vegas, yeah. And in, I was going to say in Las Vegas, his big old face is there. So, I mean, he's still 
relevant. Yeah. Is that the word? I'm I, I, I would say so. Yeah, he still brings a crowd in, and yeah. So I mean, there's still there's still things for him, but what's he doing now? Yes. Well, fifty years was his first uh, solo album. He's he's been doing this for quite a while. Mm-hmm. He's now it's going to be his sixty second album, not by himself, but like all his albums all together. This is his sixty second album. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So, so all his albums that's including his albums with like Donnie Marie, his albums with his brothers, his solo albums. This is his 62nd album and he's, I didn't, he had an album back in 2014 for, for those that um, downloaded it. <laughs> so this is, this is the, um, this is the follow up of his album from 2014 that he's working on. Um, and this is, this is going to be um, <laughs> again, this is going to be covers. I think I've heard that before on our show, mm-hmm. another person doing covers. So, songs, songs of other people, other people's, other people's stuff. Other people's well, stuff. the way he called it is notable covers. Oh, well, that's different. Yes, he he wanted to word it different. So these are notable covers for his first solo effort in in a while, and he's doing artists like Michael Jackson, the Beatles, um, just all over the place with with these this album. Why you ask he's doing this? I don't know. Maybe he wants a second billboard in Vegas maybe. or maybe he wants a billboard in, in Atlantic City now because hmm. I think that's where you go after Vegas. <laughs> so <laughs> so I don't know. But um, yeah, it, he's doing another album. Donny Osmond, notable covers. As opposed to just, you know, bed covers because that's just a different type. Different. different yeah, type yeah, no. No. So just yeah. to give a little more uh, scoop on Donny Osmond, he's 61 years old. He's been married for like 41 or 40 years. Well, um, they're Mormons, right? They're, and they have like 92 kids, yeah, right? They've got, well, when it says, the list starts listing and then it says, you know, more. Name one, <laughs> name two, name three, and then more. Actually, they have five five children, so psh, that's child's play. Yeah. Five. I would think they would have at least eight. Yeah, no. I mean, no, John, not, five kids, John. come on. I know, I was like, five kids. That's not even getting warmed up. What are they talking about? John could do notable covers then. <laughs> exactly, I could be doing notable <laughs> covers. You know what it is? He's got five kids. They're probably getting to the age where there's probably grandkids now. Maybe he has to you know, do another album and makes a little money. Yeah, exactly, because Christmas time is tough when you have grandchildren. That's I, I, Dan hit it right there. See, there's always a method to their madness, and Dan figured it out. Yeah. <sighs> well, that was inspiring. If nothing else, he can give out the CDs for uh, for gifts. Oh, sure. Ooh. Could autograph them. There you go. Could be valuable. With a picture. Someday. Yeah. So, Tony Osman, ladies and gentlemen, I think we're we're just kind of going down the rabbit hole now. <laughs> All right. No, no pun intended, right? With Bugs Bunny. No, we see. No pun intended. You Rosky Rabbit. <laughs> Uh, please, please, please tell me we're bringing up out of this nosedive with this because we're up to five now, I think, right? Yes, we're on five yeah. now. Yes. Yeah. Just, I wanted to give you guys, um, some like stat. Remember I did stats before with, um, with the music and everything. Well, I wanted you guys to let you know about vinyl albums and how they're still relevant for, mm-hmm. for those that buy, they're so relevant that actually every year they're growing. So people are still, and I don't mean just DJs, people are still out there and they're buying vinyl albums. And um, this is their 13th consecutive year of growth of vinyl albums in all these years. So uh-huh. there are people out there that are, they're still, getting, are still getting them. So um, in 2018, 16.8 million vinyl albums were sold. It's a lot considering all the other sources we have Mm -hmm. so um they're saying that of course cd format continues to be the leader for all album purchases with downloading the runner-up now remember like for djs it's totally different you got to think from like a normal person's people are still buying cds too Mm -hmm. and i know we talked about that about how stores are actually taking them out 
because of sales. Yeah. So it's very interesting that vinyl album sales are still growing and people are still buying them and people are still buying the, those CDs. And I don't know if they're just talking about like the box sets that I tell you guys about, because I know those are collector items and that, you know, that's different for me. I would definitely want like a collector item of, of a certain artist if, if they came out with it. Sure. Um, can anyone tell me the top selling vinyl album artist of 2018? Huey Lewis, because John Bottomall. <laughs> wow. The logic and intelligence that man just displayed in that one sentence. Now, he's kind of on the right track because actually it's not like a current artist that came out of 2018. So the top selling vinyl album artist is not some like a, a Cardi B okay. type artist. I'm going to say, in, in all seriousness, I'm probably going to say Michael Jackson. Mm, that's a good one. Is John still sticking with Huey Lewis? <sighs> I don't think the, the Prince, there wasn't anything really with Prince that was uh, released. I'm going to probably go actually go to Beatles. That uh, that uh, that the Beatles, because uh, they released a couple of um, specific albums this past year. That would be my guess. Okay. Well, I have to say that John actually won, and he's actually on point. It is the Beatles. Good job, John. And the top selling one from them was Abbey Road. I think it's back there, somewhere up there. Yeah, so like I said, people are still um, Buying, um, I'm looking at the chat. Uh, David is correct. Rolling Stones is actually one of the top five, too. For, and Pink Floyd, unless you guys were Googling this without me. <laughs> um, Scott, Pink Floyd is actually in the top five as well. So look at the artists that are in the top five of vinyl sales. Um, Beatles, Rolling Stones, Pink Floyd. I mean, none of that is, <laughs> is current. So it's very interesting to see, and I don't have the stats of the ages of people buying them, mm -hmm. you know, since it wasn't like streaming and you don't have like all your stats when you, you know, give stuff like that. But it's very interesting. Like I said, uh, vinyl sales are up. The CD format continues to be the leader for album purchases and digital format is, is a runner up from there. So there are still places that are selling the CDs. I know they're still in one of the targets I go to because I actually looked. Sure. I know they were pulling them, but it's still in. And then when I did go to a Best Buy, they, they still had them too, which I thought they were pulling them out of Best Buy. So, mm -hmm. and then I don't know about Walmart. I haven't been in, in Walmart um, for a while. So I'm, I'm probably assuming Walmart still has CDs. Yeah, the, the collection, like like you said, they started to pull or, or the, the amount that they have is greatly reduced. It, it baffles me in some ways I should take it back. I, I, I was going to say it baffles me in some ways that um, CD sales are still winning. But as I think about it, when you think about purchasing, the generation that's going to purchase is probably more likely going to purchase a CD because the generation that has moved on is now streaming. Yeah. yeah. And and so so, you know, I wouldn't be surprised if overall downloads maybe even – I don't want to say are going down, but are more stagnant. Um, just because, just because of the way out, you know what I mean? Like, like yeah. the yeah. people who are really quick on the downloads. Again, not thinking DJ format, thinking people format. Um, you know, people people that have converted to that digital have kind of said, okay, you know, well, let me just stream. Yeah. So. Yeah. I also would be curious as to how many, and, and this is you know purchasing. You'd be curious. Um, the record in you know, the vinyls, how much of those are for collecting and how much are actually going to put it on a player and, and listen. Especially when you talk about them being more the older. Yeah. And older I think albums. most of the Beatles, the ones that they came back, they were special pressing that were colored vinyl and, and a few things such as that. So those probably aren't going to get played very often, if at all. Keep it in the case. Sell it 30 years from now. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. 
So right. very, very interesting. Yeah. Always, always curious to know and and to think about just like stats like that because and maybe it's the numbers guy in me, but just to see how things are changing. You know, we think they're all going one direction because this is what we experience, but right. when you look at nationwide, it's like, oh, well, maybe not. So, all right. So we went yes. through our five. Yeah. We had five on it. Yeah. Six for good luck. Six for good luck. So, um, John, I, I'm I'm sorry to say that um, this this came out on Friday, and um, it was all over social media. And I know you're going to have to go through your music library now and decide what you want to do. But ladies and gentlemen, little Uzi Vert has decided to stop making music. I know you're very sad, John. I know you play little Uzi music. Um, well, I can't even do this with a straight face. <laughs> All the time. I, mean, I know he's in it's your my ring personal tone. playlist. It's my ringtone. It's my get up in the morning tone. I know. I it's know. my when I'm feeling down and I need a pick me up tone. Yeah. Well, it's, I just want to let you know, I mean, little Uzi in his own words said, look, I'm calling it quits of music. I just want to be normal. End our, of quote. Our loss. And now I'm sure about 95% of the chat is like, who Ooh. the <laughs> blank is little Uzi Vert? <laughs> I'm sure they are going through their music library and going, I don't even know who Little Uzi is. Well, for those that do kid events and 20-year-old and events and things like that, I'm sure you played a couple of songs last year and probably kind of maybe still still maybe threw them in. But he just decided he um, he just wants to be normal now. So he erased all his music content on his instagram and only left 28 selfies on his page Man, wow. so all the music is gone from his instagram and he said he just wants to start a new stage in his life and he wants to thank his fans and he just wants to be normal wow yeah now this is what's interesting to me because they've been hyping that he was supposed to drop his sophomore album this month next month in the next like couple months so that they've been hyping it up that he was going to drop the album so i don't know if this is just maybe it just got to him and he was one of those rappers that was like like i can't do any like i realize i just oh I'm, I'm more your pony i got one album in me right, and I like i'm good i'm good but i mean for those that really don't know who he is um his 2017 album did hit number one on the uh, Billboard 200 charts, hmm. and one of his um, one of his top songs I actually played in the club like all the time all last year. It's called EXO Tour Life, I believe that was the name of it. So he, I definitely played that when I would play that. Everybody would kind of go crazy, like Mo Obama kind of go crazy. So it definitely he definitely had that following, and he definitely had a huge following. And that was probably, and that was one of the songs of summer of, um, 2017, 2018. So that definitely was like a big, big, big summer song. But, um, I think he's like 24, 25 on top of it. He's got his whole life ahead of him. Who he knows? Up funny. He's going to just go ahead and be normal. Yeah. I mean, you know, uh, I was worried. No, I'm glad that he can now yeah. go be normal. You know what? In two years, he's going to have, he's going to come back to her. Right. He'll do a comeback tour. We'll see. I mean, you know, maybe this is like a mental health thing just to kind of just be serious for a second. We see all these, you know, DJs and artists that have gone in 2018 because of serious mental health issues. So maybe this is, you know, to be kind of on a serious note right now, maybe just he needed to step away from the limelight and step away from all that money that he had and just be like, look, I, I can't handle it. Like this is spiraling for me. I don't know. I, I have not talked to him. I have not interviewed him. So I don't know. So you just kind of have to think of it from both sides. I know we're kind of funny when we talk about the mumble rap and stuff like that. But then again, I mean, maybe this is saving him, you know, so he doesn't have to spiral out and do the whole rehab thing that we see, you know, artists like, you know, Selena Gomez and all them like going through all the time that mm -hmm. keeps saying they're making these comebacks and then they spiral down. So, um, so who knows? 
you know, who knows? I mean, if that's the case, God bless him. And then I hope he get, you know, he gets his life together and gets back and maybe he will have a comeback album. You, you, you never know. And for those that don't even know who he is, um, you can figure it out or don't worry about it if you <laughs> never worry. played his music. But I know John is very sad. Yeah, that, I, I do um, get emotional about that because, you know, you know, he can't play it in rotation anymore because no. he's just too heartbroken. Well, I'll, I'll be able to, you know, hold on to yesterday. So I'll just hold on to that. <sighs> yeah, he, he I wonder also if this was somewhat like you kind of talked publicity, something like that. Um I, I was talking about I've got a, a teen event coming up this weekend and just real quick after you mentioned I went back and looked at the request list. Six songs of his on the list. Uh -huh. Still. And not and the funny ones, not a single one were EXO Tour Life. Really? Yeah. I, like when you said that, I'm like, Oh yeah. Nope. Not a single one. Hmm. Yeah. So yeah. And I'm surprised something, Shaney. I, I thought you were going to go with a different bonus after what you sent us today. <laughs> no, I don't know. I was not going Because it even came up in the chat just a few I moments I know, ago. it's always coming up. No, no. No? No, no. I mean, you can talk about it, That what I sent you. You can talk about it. You can talk about it. Go ahead, Dan. You share that one, and then I've got one. Uh, I've got one that popped up, and I was wondering if that was. Well, we're all bringing bonuses to the yes, table tonight. Like, I thought Shane was going to hit this one, but I mean, it's not quite music related. I, I just sent it to you guys. I was like, I'm not talking about it. So I got to give Shane because I didn't find this. This was all in her, but she's too embarrassed to share. Um, so, Baby Shark from Pink Fong. Uh, if you're not familiar with it, you either don't have kids or you've been living under a rock or both. Um, but they uh the song that went viral kind of over the summer and and whatnot it has somehow weirdly suddenly hit top 40 on the billboard charts yep and i think if i if i remember correctly when i read 32 on the charts so not i i find it weird that when everything happened before that somehow it didn't hit the charts per se and and now it hit the chart and top 40 charts at that for billboards so there you have it a couple of the guys in the chat room were saying it just recently came out on pool it suddenly showed up in karaoke as well so uh someone i guess finally said here release it technically um someplace besides youtube but yeah and uh my, my son is is very pleased that it's now in uh, <laughs> oh, that it's there. Billboard because he knows there is not just baby shark there is pirate baby shark and there is Christmas Santa Baby Shark oh, and wow. Halloween Baby Shark. And if you don't know about the 8,000 different versions of Baby Shark, I envy you. <laughs> I did not know there was that multiple multiple version. Yeah. So with that being said, John. So, so uh, Alfonso, the uh, gentleman who did the Carlton dance from uh, Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. Yes. Along with the Backpack Kid and uh, what was the other DJ? Da, 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 da. Let's see, a rapper, Two Millie. Excuse me. Yeah. Uh, the three of them are suing the creators of Fortnite in the in these advent are basically saying that they stole some of their dance moves. So some of the Fortnite characters are doing the Carlton. Some of them are doing the floss, which the Backpack Kid supposedly came up with. And then of course uh, there's a dance. I don't know what Two Millie's dance. Millie Rock. The Millie, Millie Rock. Rock. So they, um, this past week that came out that they were going to be suing uh, Fortnite because of stealing the dance uh, move. So if you're Now not is Carlton still suing after he came out and said that he stole the Carlton dance? As of right now, I, um, the New York Times is reporting that uh, are suing as of uh, th uh, Friday. Okay. Okay, because he did make a statement last month that he stole the Carlton dance. Even though like he made it his, he explained like where the dance came, came from. from for him. So that was like a whole big thing when he first was going to say that he was going to sue them. And then when he got interviewed, he was like, well, I, I kind of stole it. But yeah, it'll be very interesting to see what happens with, with the Fortnite because they did not get all their permissions to put their, even though they're not using their likeliness to put um, those, those dances. Moves. And as we all know, I mean, especially when you do those kid parties, 
you know where those moves come from. You know, like when you play those certain hip hop songs, they do those certain moves to those certain songs because like the Millie rock, like it's to this song and, you know, and things like that. So it's like, you know, so it's very interesting to see what's going to happen now. Get that money. Yeah, that's what they're after. So, so yeah, that was kind of an interesting, interesting little tidbit uh, was as kids are so much into the Fortnite craze out there right now. So, but that's all I, I thought was interesting this week. So there you go. Awesome. Excellent. Awesome. So with that being said, I think, unless there's somebody else, maybe else. I think that's it. <laughs> that's MJ's right. going to pop in out of the bottom. I've got one. <laughs> <laughs> well, he does. Actually, MJ does have a, uh, a, a, a couple of things from that are going to be released at NAM that he knows about because he's been shooting the video on them, but we can't talk about them yet. But let's see. Thursday, Thursday morning. First thing, you're going to hear about a big, uh, big release from Denon. And yes. if you didn't see, uh, MJ's teased it a little bit today. All I can I say, I'm going to have to go back and check it out. Yeah, it's not, he did a mat today on it. All I can say is that I shared it with a certain 16 year old. I sent him a picture in school and he jumped up and up and down in the classroom and said, Oh my gosh, I want this. So, wow. I'm just saying, I got that message loud and clear. But that'll be Thursday. And the teacher in me is going, and that's why there's problems because parents are texting their kids in school. Mm-hmm. Sending them a picture <laughs> of something really cool from my, yes. But they, oh, by the way, you can't, yeah. you can't say anything about this. <laughs> and he would proceed to take a screenshot and share it with eight of his friends. <laughs> uh, anyway, so definitely make sure that you're checking out that. Make sure you're checking out Thursday morning. You said is when he's going to release morning. that. Yep, they're going to do first thing in the morning. So I think we're going to try to aim for uh, about six in the morning, Thursday morning, so we can be nice. out there and, and be ahead of the head of everyone because MJ's got the video shot on it. And I think a lot of people are going to be uh, pleasantly surprised at what they, they've come out with. It's a pretty, pretty cool device. Yeah, they're, they're stepping up. They're definitely stepping up big, big time. Yeah. Very cool. So be checking out that. Uh, new show formats and all the cool things to do with that have been starting to roll out. So if you haven't got, gotten a chance to check those, make sure that you are on that. Again, DJinsider.com gets you all the DJ and TV Insider, sorry, uh, is what you want to check out so that you can get all those details, get signed up, get into it, find out what's going on. Guarantee you that's the place that you need to, to be so that you are uh, no longer behind like you probably are about the thing that's coming out Thursday morning because I have no clue yet. And you will know on Thursday morning. Uh, But then we will be back again next Monday potentially and uh, see what's going on with that. And if for some reason we don't, we'll keep you informed with it. Uh, But I have some form of fashion. We will be here just for you. Um, But on that note, thank you very much for tuning in. It's been a great show. Five, six, seven. I think we had like 12, 20 topics before it was all said and done. So, and if I can't count it, it's okay. It's Monday night. I don't care anymore. So you have yourself a good one. We'll catch y'all later. And everybody.